Hello, my name is Paul Stewart and I'm currently at Kuala Lumpur Airport where we're about to test out the Malaysian Airlines flagship first class product in the brand new Airbus A350 through to London. I'll run through the full first class experience starting with check-in and yes, as always, I'll be giving away the amenity kit with details of that later in the video. Now I'll quickly clarify the purpose of this channel. I pay for the flights and the airlines don't know I'm coming. I'm not an entrepreneur nor is my aim to make money off this channel because it cost me thousands or get free flights. It's purely to showcase my aviation geekness and my travels around the world in comfort. I have a job on the side that pays the bills, therefore you know I'm being completely honest with my reviews because I'm not chasing favours with airlines. Having said that, I enjoy interacting with the crews and if the service is really good, I'll give them their due praise. Now on with the trip report. As you've seen, I've dropped off my bags in the dedicated first class section and caught the train to the satellite terminal. I've uploaded a separate and detailed review of the lounge with a link below so I'll just show you the highlights. It was a comfortable and quiet place to wait, with full table service and an a la carte menu. Because I was travelling in first class, rather than simply being platinum with Malaysian, I was allowed into the dedicated first class suite. This single room, which includes a shower, is pretty amazing and it would have to be one of the best private rooms within a lounge I've ever experienced. The service was also pretty fantastic, as was the view. This was my actual aircraft flying me to London and after uh, fruit juice, because it was 7 in the morning, I headed off to the departure gate. This particular A350-900 was only 5 months old and comes with the Malaysia Negaraku livery, which hopefully I pronounced correctly. It's a fantastic aircraft and in this video, as well as my business class flight, which I'll upload in a few weeks, I got some amazing views out the window. That winglet in particular is something special. The gate was opened and I headed on board. Unlike most airlines who haven't installed first class on the A350, Malaysian have a small four seat cabin in a one to one layout. The middle two are best for couples, if you want to speak to them of course, and the window is best if you're travelling alone. Uh, that reason, and because I wanted a view out the window, was why I selected 1K. A hot or cold towel was brought around and a welcoming drink, which in this case was a Wow Emmers, which I'm sure I've mispronounced. No champagne was offered and I suspect this was due to taxes, which seems a little tight for first class. There weren't any nibbles either, not even nuts. I hope the daughter of the president of Korean Air never flies these guys. And of course, being a millennial, I checked my phone in case something had changed since I checked a minute ago. And on that topic, make sure you check me out on Instagram and Facebook. Let's go through seat 1K in more detail. On the left, you've got storage pockets for magazines, and in front of you is an ottoman which joins with the seat to form a long bed. Above that is a large touch screen, which I'll look at in more detail later. There's heaps of storage in this seat if you can't be bothered standing up and using the overhead bins. Here's the fold out table, which importantly you can slide forward and sneak out into the aisle which is useful if you, like me, have the bladder of a pregnant woman. Next up is the control centre which has more buttons than a cockpit. Which is really a good thing as I do think cockpits are cool but also I like to adjust my seat as much as possible. Just be aware that there are more buttons hidden under the armrest. In here there's also power plugs including a USB charger, more storage and a mirror. This thing is just decoration and on the other side of your seat is a reading light. This latch down here is to close the door, which I filmed after takeoff when it was unlocked. And now other bits I forgot to include, such as the overhead air vents and lights. 
As I tend to find aircraft cabins too hot in general, I really appreciate the steady flow of air. I have no idea why many airlines are now getting rid of them. There's also electric window shades in case you can't be bothered moving your whole arm and only have the energy to move a finger. It's a tough life. Noise cancelling headphones were delivered, although rather unfortunately, they collect these before landing, so you're stuck with uh, your own thoughts, which in my case is mostly about aeroplanes or politics. Unsurprisingly, I'm a great fun of parties. And here is the amenity kit. Pajamas were also included, and they felt pretty sturdy. I'll be giving the kit away to a lucky subscriber, and I'll mention details of that later. And just to highlight how big the storage bin is, here's my travel bag which was an easy fit. Now that's enough talking, let's sit back and enjoy some music compliments of two Rolls Royce Trent XWBs. The views out of the window were rather impressive as we climbed up through the clouds. Champagne was eventually offered and it was a reasonable drop. The food is all dine on demand so you can choose what and when you want it. As it was the morning I slept at a rather bizarre combination of breakfast and dinner and it all tasted fine. And a top up of the fruit juice. I think it was grapes from memory. And don't worry, I'm going to include footage of the menus at the end of this video. It looked like pretty good weather outside and I managed to zoom in on this little tropical island. A slight complaint was that the seatbelt sign remained illuminated for about the first three and a half hours of the flight, even though it didn't seem to be any rougher than usual. It seems that the crew and passengers agreed as the full meal service, minus hot drinks, was delivered and a lot of passengers were getting up and using the bathrooms. I'm not sure if they forgot about the light or if it's a normal practice to leave it on. Maybe it's a policy to avoid lawsuits because I guess they can argue, well, you shouldn't have been walking around. I guess the issue was that we never knew if turbulence was imminent. Anyway, I did manage to get into one of the two toilets allocated to the four first class passengers. I also got into my pyjamas, which I'm actually wearing while editing this video now, which is useful information. I do love watching the route map and then looking outside now that I'm actually orientated. The part over India was quite smooth and I thought it was time for more food, or second lunch I suppose. After second lunch, I thought I might get some shut eye and the seat was converted into a bed by one of the flight attendants. It's a reasonably thin mattress, although the seat padding itself is quite soft, so it's quite comfortable. As we're flying with the rotating world, our 12 and a half hour flight was all in daylight. Unsurprisingly, and probably due to the coffee, I didn't sleep long, so I watched a movie. So it's a touch screen, although it's really too far forward for you to use that, so you use the remote control on your right. It scrolls through the different options really quickly with almost no lag. The screen itself is bright and of decent quality. The biggest problem here is that there aren't actually many movies or TV programs to watch. 
I don't think I completed watching any single movie. The interactive map, on the other hand, was pretty cool and what you'd expect in a modern airliner. As I said before, I love working out where I'm flying over and identifying mountains, lakes and cities. Now back to the movie. There are three advertisements that played at the start although you are able to fast forward through them. Best you just speed it up to double time so that you don't miss the start. So in summary of the in-flight entertainment, the hardware is great but the actual content is lacking. We were now about two hours out from London so I was keen to have some dinner. First up was the signature satay chicken and beef which tasted great. Following that was lobster, noodles and then some ice cream. While I was eating, out the window was a wonderful view of Western Europe. Unfortunately, the ice cream was more of a slightly cold liquid, so I drowned my sorrows with Bailey's Irish cream, which, as usual, turned my frown upside down. We crossed the channel, and I continued to admire the A350's curves, especially as we joined the usual circle work above Heathrow as we waited to fit into a landing slot. By the way, I'll run you through all of the menus at the end of the video. I'll summarise the flight as you enjoy the views flying directly over London, including getting quite a good view of the Concorde that's resting at Heathrow and the Tower of London. So how was it? Look, it was okay. I flew thousands of kilometres in comfort, which would have been unthinkable only 100 years ago, so I can't complain too much. But if I was to compare it to other first class products, it wouldn't be near the top. The sea itself was fine and obviously it was very private once the doors were closed, although it's quite narrow, so if you're the claustrophobic type, you may want to keep the door open. The in-flight entertainment was held back by very limited content and I struggled to find anything that interested me. Thankfully I had something to watch on my computer. The service was adequate, although you could tell that some of the staff were very junior. Because business class these days is so good, you're relying on the service in first class to be a step ahead, and it wasn't. It took 20 minutes to get a response to my call bell on one occasion and that included cancelling and recalling after 10 minutes. The food tasted fine, especially the satay chicken and beef and I enjoyed the lobster. Look, I was really hoping to say that I loved this flight and it all started so well in the lounge at Kuala Lumpur but unfortunately things didn't go amazingly well since then. Alas, I got to my destination safely and well fed. And before I forget, I'm giving away the Amanti kit. As with previous competitions, simply reply with hashtag first class kit and the competition will close 30 days after this video was uploaded. Full details of the giveaway are in the video description below. Now sit back and enjoy the views as we come into land at Heathrow followed by the menus. Now I've had to lower the ambient sounds including engine noises unfortunately because there was rather loud pop music playing as we came into land therefore it would have set off YouTube's copyright alarms. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more similar videos. I'll be uploading my Malaysia A350 business class flight report in a few weeks and, spoiler alert, the service was much improved and I captured amazing views out the window. Thanks for watching.